Good afternoon fellow plane builders and aviation enthusiasts. This is a part of the construction of my Zenith 750, excuse me, CH750 aircraft that I've both dreaded and been somewhat excited about. On the table here I have a uh, 4 foot by 12 foot sheet of 32 thousandths thick 6061 T6 aluminum and this 32 thousandths thick sheet is what is going to make up my wing spars. If you're not familiar with the term wing spar, it is the backbone of the wing. It's the major structural portion of the wing that provides support to all the other structural pieces such as the wing ribs and the skins that are bolted to it. And this is what is bolted to your cabin or the fuselage structure and this is the main piece of aircraft that holds your airplane in the air when you're flying. So by most accounts this is the most critical portion of the airplane. It's so critical in fact that uh, Zenith Aircraft recommends that you do corrosion protection on this part um, even though the rest of the airplane construction does not require any further corrosion protection they do recommend you do Corro full corrosion protection on this piece. Furthermore, in the rest of the construction standards, there is a one millimeter tolerance called for in all of the dimensions and measurements. However, this piece requires a one half millimeter tolerance. That's how critical this is. So if you look at my blueprints here, this here is the dimensions of the spar web, which is what this 32 thousandths portion is made up of. The spar itself is actually made up of additional pieces such as the spar caps, the spar doublers, strut fittings, root fittings, um, and other little bits and reinforcing pieces here. But the main structure itself is the wing spar web. So starting with a bare sheet I've borrowed a 12 foot straight edge. This main spar web itself is approximately 11 feet 3 inches, so almost a full 12 feet. It's almost the full length of the sheet. So what I have to do is cut a strip of it 209 millimeters deep from edge here to wherever 209 millimeters ends up over here. Now the method I've been using to cut all of my sheet aluminum is a, a scoring knife uh, with a straight edge. I've used the uh, Ultha P800 laminate scoring knife and it's actually been an extremely useful and productive way to cut aluminum. It scores, you make several passes with it, much like if you're cutting a sheet of drywall with a razor blade or in a utility knife, you do the same thing with aluminum, you make several passes of it or with it and then bend the edge of it over a, a rigid table and or something like that and the piece of aluminum snaps. So the trick here is that the edge of the aluminum after you score and snap it needs to be dressed a little bit and dressing means you you file it down a little bit to smooth out any rough edges. So the trick is going to be on a 12 foot piece of aluminum such as this I don't want to have to hand file down several extra millimeters. So if I cut it too wide, if I cut it at 2010 or 2011 millimeters, I don't want to have to hand dress each edge down to 209 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is cut it a half a millimeter wide. So I'm going to do the best I can to measure and cut it at 209.5 millimeters. And that will give me a little bit of material to work with to dress the factory edge from the rolled sheet here and then the cut edge up here with the file and hopefully maintain that half a millimeter tolerance. So what I want it to be by the time I'm all done is somewhere between 208.5 and 209.5 millimeters with half, to, half a millimeter tolerance on either side of the dimension. So if a 209 is the actual dimension, 208.5 on this side is acceptable. 209.5 on the other side is acceptable. Okay, so I've laid out the width of the wing spar web here. Uh, you can see the light blue line here. Um, I used 
perpendicular reference lines at specific locations where the blueprints call for uh, lightning holes uh, to be centered on. So if you look here, there are holes cut in the spar web um, to make it lighter. And those are located at specific measurements from the edge and moving left to right. What I did was took my framing square and drew those vertical lines on here. Now, normally I wouldn't make a whole bunch of measurements before I cut the piece simply because uh, if I cut it and I've drawn out the entire all the all the rivet lines and all the station lines and everything else uh, if I make a mistake I will have spent all that time laying everything out for nothing so what I'm gonna well, but however what this does give me is when you're making your measurements you need to be very careful that your reference lines or that your measurement lines are exactly in my case 209 millimeters from the edge so what these uh, reference lines for the lightning holes gave me was a perfectly perpendicular line to measure down to my two and a half or excuse me two two hundred and nine and a half millimeters if this line wasn't perp perpendicular if I simply just eyeballed it on the edge here I could be slightly angled which would result in a shorter measurement uh, you know one way or the other so so by making sure that you're using right angled or perpendicular reference lines you can get a precise measurement out to the very edge of where you need to be and of course I'm at 209.5 so I did that at several locations I just simply marked off the axis for each one of these lightning holes all the way down the piece of material until I come to the end which is right here this is the only cutoff for this piece this is the from this line all the way down to the 12 foot end of the aluminum is the length of the spar. So making sure that I have perpendicular reference lines from, lines from which to measure the 209 millimeters gives me a very good idea of whether or not this straight edge is really straight. And in fact it wasn't. It, when I laid it down across my reference lines at various points there was some slight variation in it because it was not perfectly straight. And it will flex either way. Uh, because it does have some bow in the material you can you can tease it into position and have a perfectly straight line that way But without reference marks you wouldn't know that if you simply marked it at the very end Here and down there you could end up with a slight curvature to your cut Now the trick is going to be to clamp this in place So that I can use it to cut with my scoring knife and have it be a perfectly straight cut and for a 12 foot length of material I actually have to get up on top of it and cut by hand with my scoring knife and make probably eight to ten passes uh, the full length of the material with my scoring knife. So I'm going to work on that next and hopefully get a good solid cut and then we'll take some measurements afterwards and see how, how the tolerance is lined up on the length of the cut and if everything turned out then I'll actually start to measure it where everything goes on this piece of material. So you can see there's an angle cut there. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine lightning holes. And then when we get into the assembly of it, where I need to start attaching other parts, we will actually locate these stations. So if you look here on the plans, this is STN 280, that stands for station 280. That's 200 millimeters. Uh, from the end of the spar and then I have station 960, station 1640, station 2040 and so on. And you can see that there's various things going on at these individual stations whether it's simply just a rivet line for uh, the wing ribs or a reinforcing structure here and here we have actually strut, uh, um, strut fittings that protrude, protrude downward from the wing and then this is where you attach the very end of the spar tip. This is a separate piece of material here in a different thickness that has its own lightning holes. So you can see that there's interesting things going on at all of these station lines. Those will have to be marked separately. You'll notice that those do not co coincide with the lines that I've already marked for my lightning holes. 
So what I'll probably do is mark those in a different color, probably red, and label them station 280, station 960, and so on. So that it's very clear as I'm building it which line is which on the measurements and so that I don't mess anything up. But first things first, I actually have to clamp and cut this piece. And I think I'm actually going to film myself doing that so you can see what kind of a what kind of a process that actually is. But uh, more on that to follow. I don't know if I'll get to that tonight, but we'll, that'll be the next segment of this video. Thank you.